2018 is going to be an exciting year for the crossover class. Last season, Polaris absolutely nailed the category with the Switchback Assault that had both on and off trail riders equally as excited. But let's be real here. Skidoo is never one to let the grass grow under their feet in this industry, and they have unsurprisingly responded with a new crossover of their own. The Backcountry X isn't a new model, but rather a new version of a model Skidoo discontinued a few seasons ago. Now, Skidoo doesn't make a lot of mistakes in this industry, but most people agree dropping the original Backcountry X was one. So inevitably, people are going to wonder, does the new Backcountry X 850 surpass the Switchback Assault 800 in its ability to bridge the gap between on and off trail capability in a single sled? Not to burst your bubble, but you're gonna have to wait until the end of this shootout to find out. Deciding what a crossover actually is, is paramount in deciding which crossover sled is the best. If you don't know where the target you're shooting for is located, it's pretty hard to hit a bullseye. So what is a crossover? Well, for starters, it's a term that's been so loosely used over the past decade, it's lost pretty much all of its meaning. I mean, seriously, how can a Yamaha Apex XTX and an Arctic Cat High Country both be crossovers? Just because they have a longer track does not mean they fit the bill. No, I prefer a much more specific definition. In my opinion, a crossover is a sled that is as good on the trail as it is off. It can't be heavily biased to one versus the other. It has to be legitimate on both fronts. It also can't simply be a mountain sled with a wide front end any more than it can be a trail sled with a longer track. A crossover is greater than the sum of its parts. The way I look at it, a crossover sled has to be one that you can hand to an on-trail rider and have them come away with excellent things to say, and then immediately take it and hand it to an off-trail rider and have them come away with equal praise. Very few, in fact, almost no sleds have hit this mark since the crossover class was created. Last season, Polaris' Switchback Assault absolutely nailed it. Now let's find out how the Backcountry X measures up. The Switchback Assault is completely unchanged in 2018, which is good, because absolutely no changes were needed from the 2017 model. It's based on Polaris's axis front end and utilizes both trail width and geometry. Out back, you'll find a solid tunnel that houses a 144 inch skid that was new last season. Polaris has labeled it the IGX 144. You can order your assault with either a 1.375 or a two inch lug sneaker. Engine options are either a 6 or 800 clean fire, the latter is what we're dealing with today, and there aren't really any sub-models of this sled. You pick your engine, you pick your track, you pick your accessories, and you have your very own assault. In the other corner is the new kit on the block, Skidoo's Backcountry X850. It's based on Skidoo's G4 platform and obviously houses their more than impressive 850 E-Tech power plant. The front end of the Backcountry X is a special setup that's not found on any other sled in Skidoo's 2018 lineup. It's called the RAS-3. The RAS-3 is based on the front end found on Skidoo's Summit models and utilizes A-arms similar to a Summit, but spindles similar to an MXZ to improve on-trail stability and handling. Outback is an all-new 146-inch skid Skidoo is calling the C-Motion. It's wrapped in a 16-inch wide by 2-inch lug sneaker. C-Motion is said to combine the best traits of T-Motion for off-trail and the best traits of R-Motion for on-trail. To make this shootout easier to follow and the results easier to understand, we're going to break our evaluation into eight categories. The sled that wins the most wins the shootout. The categories are on-trail ride, on-trail handling, off-trail ride, off-trail handling, power and drivetrain, ergonomics, features, and fit and finish. Let's jump into our first category on-trail ride and see who comes out on top. If there's one thing everyone here at Snow Tracks is convinced of, it's that the Switchback Assault is a great riding snowmobile. After a full season on the snow and nearly 2,000 miles on the odometer, there's no question, it rides great when the trails are rough. The Axis front end here rides like any other Axis front end. That is, it provides the best front end ride in the business, if only by a small margin this season. Out back, that IGX 144 would feel right at home in a trail-specific sled. It soaks up little stuff, big stuff, and anything in between, and thanks to a full set of adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks, you can tune it to your liking. The backcountry's front end, with its mix of on- and off-trail components, rides surprisingly well. Our past experiences with crossover sleds that utilize front-end parts from a mountain sled have not been good. 
but this one is different and better. Outback, the new C-Motion skid does a great job of smoothing out rough spots no matter how bad they get. We like that it's uncoupled and therefore transfers its weight. Is the suspension setup on the backcountry as good on the trail as the Assault? No. It's close, but pretty much everybody who went back and forth between the two agrees, the Assault is just that much better. So score one point for the Polaris. On-trail handling may be one of the most important categories in this shootout. It's proven to have more of an effect on a rider's overall opinion of a crossover than any other single aspect of a sled. Again, Polaris is using a trail front end that we think may just be the best handling front end in the business, and it's no different here on the Assault. Handling is predictable, stable, and precise. A hint of inside ski lift sets the outside ski into the snow and around you go, no matter the conditions. It probably won't come as a surprise to most of you that the RAS3, being a hybrid, doesn't handle as well on the trail as a dedicated trail front end. It's good, and we have to admit, we were pleasantly surprised and impressed with how this sled handles, but if you handed this sled to a dedicated trail rider, they would immediately notice the initial understeer on corner entry and be able to tell it was a crossover. So again, the Switchback Assault takes the on-trail handling category. Now, if you'd looked at the specs of both these sleds, I would imagine that didn't come as a big surprise. Now let's move into off-trail ride. When it comes to off-trail ride, both of these sleds ride very well. In fact, we really have no complaints about either when the snow is deep, but simple physics reveals when the ground gets harder, an adjustable set of shocks is gonna give you the ability to tune the ride of the sled more precisely. The Polaris's adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks. That's why it wins this category. Not because the Backcountry X rides bad. Simply put, the Assault can be set up to ride better. So, 0.3 for Polaris. Off-trail handling was an interesting category to evaluate. Handling is a very personal thing, but off-trail, there are geometrical forces at play here that can't be ignored. The very same trail width front end that scored the win for the Assault earlier on is responsible for the loss in this category. Now that doesn't mean the Assault handles bad off-trail by any means. In fact, for a trail width front end, it's downright impressive off-trail, but the narrower RAS3 front end of the backcountry makes for an easier sled to maneuver in deep snow and more settled sled when encountering rough patches under the powder on the side of a hill. Clearly the backcountry X scores the point in off-trail handling. Now let's look at power and drivetrain. Polaris's Clean Fire 800 is a beast of a motor. Its light crank allows it to rev lightning fast and buttery smooth power starts way down low and lasts till the very top. Clutching here is excellent as well, but the honest truth is simply this. Skidoo's 850 E-Tech and P-Drive primary are just better. The 850 runs cleaner, pulls harder, and back shifts faster than the clean fire. There's nothing bad about the Switchback's powertrain, but everything about the backcountries is better 0.2 for Skidoo. This next category is a bit of a two-part. Ergonomics could be evaluated both on and off trail separately, but because these sleds are designed to do both, we've decided to combine them. When it comes to ergonomics, you do have to ride both sleds back to back to compare them, but you also have to give yourself adequate time on each to become accustomed to them. Jumping on a Skidoo from a Polaris and saying you don't like the ergos, that's just not fair. On trail, the majority of our crew prefers the ergonomics of the Switchback. The bars are just a little bit wider, the seat's just a little bit better shape and angle, and the floorboards are just that much more comfortable. Off trail, our crew still favors the Polaris, but not by nearly the same margin. The forward positioning of the Skidoo takes some getting used to, but it can be a real benefit when it's deep. When it's all said and done, the ergonomics of the Switchback are simply more pleasing in more scenarios to a wider range of people than the Backcountry X. Again, neither of these sleds are bad. The Polaris is simply that much better. Next, let's look at fit and finish. Now, we're not going to focus on value, but the fact that both of these sleds are extremely high budget rides suggests that anyone who buys one is going to expect the highest level of quality. And it's here that the Skidoo really shines. We've said it dozens of times over the past seven or eight years. Skidoo's overall quality of fit and finish is unrivaled in this industry. The same holds true here in the crossover class. Polaris has taken huge leaps forward over the past few seasons, and new Polaris sleds are the best built and best finished Polaris sleds in history. But the Skidoo is simply better. 
Now that puts our points tally at four for the Polaris and three for the Skidoo. The last category we're gonna look at is features. What do you actually get for your money when you buy either of these top of the line crossover sleds? When you spec them to the max, the Skidoo comes with a 16 wide track with a two inch paddle, a decent gauge package, a front mounted storage compartment, mountain bar, electric start, and hand guards. The Polaris, when fully spec'd, comes with a 15 wide by two inch track, a full color GPS enabled gauge, storage compartment up front, rear storage bag, adjustable Walker Evans piggyback shocks, electric start, and pro taper handlebars. Hand guards and a mountain bar are missing. It's not hard to see that in the features department, the Polaris comes out on top. The truth is, just its high-end shock package would be enough for it to win this category. With that last point, Polaris comes out on top with a total of five points to the Skidoo's three. But before we go, let's take a second to put all of this into perspective. What makes the Polaris Switchback Assault the ultimate crossover sled? Why did it win this shootout? I'm guessing there's a large group of people out there who will likely suggest it's because Polaris paid us more, which is laughable. The results of this shootout have nothing to do with dollar figures or any bias on our part. The results of this shootout simply illustrate the truth about the crossover market and what makes a great crossover sled. Sleds under the crossover label that are biased to one discipline of riding over the other have been around for a long time. But what we think sets the Switchback Assault apart from the rest, what gives it the edge and the reason it won here today, it's not a 50-50 sled. It doesn't just do well on and off trail. It does amazing both on and off the trail. If we had to put a number to it, we'd probably say this is a 100-100 split sled. Equally as good on as it is off, but also equally as good as other on-trail sleds as it is to other off-trail sleds. That's the winning formula, and it's not a secret. It's not patented. Anyone can do it and give Polaris a run for their money. The question is, who will it be? If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the like button and then subscribe to Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel that's constantly being updated with fresh content.